Gogen Yamaguchi Hanchi, 10th Don, was born in Kagoshima, Japan in 1909 and died in 1989. Yamaguchi Sensei was known as the Cat by his Western students. He got his nickname because of his long flowing hair and quick cat-like movements. In 1964, he helped form the All Japan Karate Do Federation, which succeeded in unifying some of Japan's major karate styles. During his long karate career, he made some important contributions to Japanese karate do. He is responsible for developing Jiu Kumite, or freestyle sparring, which ultimately became used for tournament competition. He developed certain techniques which became widely used in Kumite. He felt the original Goju system was too static and that the style should be more fluid. Some of his changes to the Goju Ryu style met with criticism from Okinawa, but nonetheless, his innovations were highly influential in the development of Japanese Karate Do. The Goju style traces its history back to Okinawa, Japan. Okinawa is an island which is about 300 miles south of mainland Japan. In Okinawa, Kanryo Higashiyono, who lived from 1851 until 1915, was the senior practitioner of Nahate. He went to China in 1891 and studied the Chinese style. Chojun Miyagi, who lived from 1888 until 1953, was Higashiona's successor in Okinawa. He studied the native Okinawan styles and the Nahate style under Higashiona. In the 1920s, Miyagi expanded on what he had learned from Higashiona and founded Goju Ryu Karate. He used certain concepts from a Chinese book entitled Bubishi, or Martial Arts Spirit. This text was a mystical book and highly regarded by Okinawan masters. In 1929, Miyagi visited Japan at Yamaguchi Sensei's request and taught at Ritsumeikan University in Kyoto. Yamaguchi was the founder of the Ritsumeikan Dojo. Miyagi later appointed Gogen Yamaguchi as the head of Goju Ryu Karate in Japan. Yamaguchi formed the All Japan Karate Do Goju Kai in 1930. In 1939, because of Japan's expansionist policies, Yamaguchi had to leave his Goju Kai school and was sent to Manchuria as an officer for the Japanese government. After the war, Yamaguchi Sensei set about rebuilding his Goju Kai organization. Later, Yamaguchi Sensei succeeded in having Goju Ryu admitted as a martial art into the Dainippon Butoku Kai, or the Greater Japan Martial Virtues Association, the official governing body of the Japanese martial arts at the time. In 1950, the headquarters of the Goju Kai were moved from Kyoto to Tokyo. This resulted in a great expansion of the style, both in Japan and worldwide. By 1970, Yamaguchi Sensei's Goju system had become a major style. By this time, the Goju Kai reached its highest popularity and had a membership of over 450,000 Goju Ryu Karateka. Yamaguchi Sensei will now demonstrate the techniques of Goju Ryu Karate. First of all, the, one of the basic techniques is punching. This is known as seiken, or the four fist punch. Striking with the two knuckles of the hand to the solar plexus. Strong focusing power to a vital point. Next is uraken, the back fist. This is used in a snapping motion. Okay, actually over the top. Striking to the bridge of the nose. Haito or sword ridge hand. This is the inside of the hand. He is to strike the jaw or temple. Shto, sword hand. This is the fleshy portion of the hand. That musculature is used to strike various vital points such as the temple. Nukite. This is the fingertips used for thrusting. 
thrusting either to the eyes or other vital points. Hiraken. This is the four knuckle fist, sometimes uh, referred to as the uh, leopard's fist in Go Judo. It occurs in numerous kata. Hiji ate, or elbow smash, or elbow strike. The elbow is a very powerful weapon within uh, Gojiru, in that Goju's kata emphasize close in fighting. Haisoku, this is the instep used for kicking to the groin primarily. Now, Yamaguchi Sensei demonstrates the front snap kick. Then Sokuto, this is the sword edge of the foot used in the side kick. This is used in Konsetsugeti, joint kicking to the knee or solar plexus. Koshi, the ball of the foot used in the front snap kick. Here Yamaguchi Sensei uses the ball of the foot to kick to the ribs. Next is the Makiwara. This is an old training device uh, unique to Okinawan and Japanese karate. It's used for a temi practice. These are, these are weights, iron geta and sashi. There's uh, weights, handheld dumbbells for uh, training to, for strength training in karate. Now, Yamaguchi Sensei demonstrates the Sanshin kata here. This is one of the basic forms, or the basic form, in Goju Ryu Karate. Okay, it is designed as a uh, dynamic tension and deep breathing exercise. As he steps out and breathes in, and then breathes out again, forcing the air out of his lungs. So breathing is an essential part of this kata. It's a respiratory exercise as well as training the muscles involved in the punching. Now, in addition to punching or thrusting, what San Shin is teaching <coughs> is a muscular contraction, <coughs> an isometric muscular contraction, and then also uh, how to step, the basic idea of stepping and then turning, and finally finishing up the form. Okay, this kata dates all the way back to ancient times in China and was brought to Okinawa and then finally to mainland Japan and uh, used in the development of the kata system or syllabus of the Goju Kai. Three thrusts at the end. Step back, Mawashi Uke. This is a double open hand block. Step back again, Mawashi Uke, one more time, and then finally close the form. It just consists of three steps forward, a turn, and then three steps back. Now, another essential, essential part of Sanchin training is the development of body hardening or tension. Yamaguchi Sensei here is using kicks and punches to test the amount of tension or body hardening a uh, student has developed by practicing Sanchin. Okay, this is uh, an important part of Sanchin training. Next is the Tensho Kata. Now this is a, 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 one, of, a, one of the basic Goju Kata or Goju forms. This Kata was developed by Miyagi Sensei. Okay, it was based on uh, techniques uh, from a book uh, called the Bubishi, the martial arts spirit. And these hand positions are, are shown or illustrated within the Bubishi. He made a Kata out of it. Now, in that Sanchin is a totally hard kata, Tensho kata is meant to be totally soft. So you can see kakeuke, this hooking block, palm heel thrusting, the idea of all soft movements, as opposed to linear and very hard movements. Wrist blocking, wrist blocking to the side, and then inside of the palm heel back in, in again. Now, both sides are practiced, finally. 
thrusting out with palm heels, thrusting down, gay down, lower level palm heel, pushing the double wrist blocks, wrists to the side, and then back in again. Now these are three escape movements, thrusting out, but meant to be escapes. Mawashi Uke, step back and another Mawashi Uke, and then finally Yame, or finish the form. <laughs> this next kata is Saifa. Saifa means tearing or breaking point. And the kata begins with two or, uh, or several arm releases or escapes. And then finally a counterattack and, uh, and back fist. Uh, it features two short front kicks with a uh, blocking sequence. That's actually the signature of the kata. Turning, striking with a hammer fist. This movement here is a hair grab and punch. Is the bunkai or practical application. And finally finishing up with Mawashi Uke. Yame, close the form. The next kata is called San Seiryu. This is a kaishu, or advanced kata, meaning 36, actually. The number 36 is significant uh, in Buddhism and Taoism, uh, Chinese philosophies that influenced Okinawan karate. <coughs> now, the kata starts off with the same three-step pattern, uh, similar to San Shin. The idea of stepping using dynamic tension is uh, uni almost universal in, in all the goju kata. This is repeated over and over again. Now what's happening here is a, a double kick, uh, elbow strike, and then a uh, konsetsugeri, or knee joint kick. Of course, that goes in four directions. It's repeated uh, four times. Okay, blocking, turning. Now, the kata ends with a, a unique or peculiar inugamai, or dog posture, at, at the end. And this concludes the sanseiryu form. You'll see that again also in other goju kata. This next kata is called si, uh, shisochin, which means four calm monks. Uh, shisochin starts off with three nukite, or spear hand thrusts. Again, very similar in, in the Goju syllabus of kata, this three-stepping pattern and thrusting. It seems to be the basic building block of most of the kata. Now, this kata also has a posture very similar to the Chinese uh, Kempo uh, dragon style or dragon pattern, blocking low and then high. Now, Sichochin makes use of the palm heel strike, both as a block and a strike. Here's some combination techniques, hakakeuke, hooking block, front kick, elbow strike. Elbow strike again. Double elbow strike, that's actually an escape or release from behind. And then tai sabaki or hip shifting. Turning and blocking again, yame, close the form. This next kata is, is called Seunchin. It's also pronounced Seinchin in Japanese within the Goju Kai. The kata is very old and means calm within the storm. Uh, this form uses deep abdominal breathing similar to Sanchin, and it relies on Shikodachi, or the horse stance for its footwork. Also using soft blocking movements, a grab, pulling your opponent in, and then thrusting. Okay, and that same movement repeats itself again. Soft block, turn, grab, and then thrust. Elbow strike, supported block, step back and down block. That same movement again. Actually, the embusen, or the pattern of the kata, describes a six-pointed star. There's many elbow strikes, and uh, open hand as well as closed hand uh, hand techniques uh, within this kata. 
blocking at the end, and again, finally finishing up the form. The next kata is Seisan. Okay, this kata uh, has a num numerical significance or representation also from Taoist and Buddhist philosophies. It can mean 13 or 30. And again, it starts off with the uh, three-step pattern. Okay, these are escapes and releases here. Konsetsu Gary turn and block. Again, step and block, step and block. Blocking with both hands. Turn, strong punching, Konsetsu Gary to the knee. Turn, block, strong punches, Konsetsu Gary to the knee. And finally, an, uh, a back fist, turn, front kick, punch, Mawashi Uke, roundhouse block, and then finish the form. Seipai kata. This actually means 18 from the Taoist or, or Buddhist uh, philosophies. It makes use of body twisting movements. Uh, the form is actually derived from what's called Rakan Kempo, which means monk fist boxing as described in the Bubishi. Uh, it includes uh, whirling roundhouse punches and, and rib punches as well. Turning, blocking. Kakeuke, down block. Front kick, rib punch. Kakeuke, down block, block. Front kick, and again, punch to the ribs, lowering to shiko dachi, or horse stance, punch to the ribs. Then a hammer fist at the end concludes the form. Kururumfa, this is a more advanced uh, kata. <coughs> the idea of the uh, movements in the beginning are to counter with a konsetsu gary joint kick to the knee. This is, uh, and the hand movements are actually from an old uh, method uh, of uh, defending of someone grabbing against your sleeve. Of course, it was designed for Chinese style long sleeves. Hooking blocks, kick, elbow strike. Again, patterns very similar within the goju form. Kudadunfa emphasizes this uh, wrist hooking block. turning and blocking. Now the end of the form has this unusual movement with the hands behind the head. The idea of this is a defense against a full Nelson. And then grabbing opponent from the front, elbow break. Then these movements to the side are, are dumping or throwing, scooping someone's leg. Mwashi uke, and then close the form. Now, this is a group kata. Yamaguchi Sensei and the top instructors of the Goju Kai are demonstrating Tensho kata. Tensho actually means revolving hands or change of grips. And again, Miyagi Sensei is the one who devised this kata based on a chapter in the Bubishi called Rokishu, meaning six wind hands. And the Bubishi was actually a a secret book which came from China that was highly regarded by Miyagi Sensei as well as other Okinawan masters. Okay, ten, uh, Tensho moves straight forward in a straight line, repeating the circular hand movements and actually the, the wind hand movements. Kakeuke, pushing out palm heels back lower palm heel strike and then wrist blocks a vertical shto wrist blocks to the outside and then back to the inside again then a series of uh, wrist releases or escapes mawashi uke step back again and mawashi uke and finish the form Now, Goju stylists in, in the 1960s and 70s were, were known for their strong kumite. Yamaguchi Sensei placed a lot of emphasis on kumite. Here, two of the black belts are practicing ipon kumite, one step practice fighting, simply blocking and counterattacking. Yamaguchi Sensei's innovations 
and sparring techniques uh, included uh, front leg harassment kicking, using the front leg almost as a jab in boxing to keep the opponent off of you, and also certain kicking combinations. These were uh, innovations by Yamaguchi Sensei. There's a back fist, step to the inside and back fist. Also, Yamaguchi Sensei's teaching involved uh, circular movements, stepping from side to side, circling your opponent, in addition to moving straight forward and straight back the way uh, some of the other systems in Japan uh, emphasized. Many of their movements came from kendo only and just emphasized uh, an ichimonji uh, ichi suburi, or straight line movement forward and back, and little side to side movement. In modern times, it seems like m almost all styles emphasize side to side, tie sabaki, body shifting, as, as well as uh, forward, straight forward and back. Here you can see uh, the idea of uh, punching in combination with this front leg harassment kicking. Roundhouse kick, there's a reverse punch that landed. There's another one. This is actually done in slow motion. Now, self-defense techniques. The, the idea, the concept of, of karate as a self-defense measure has, has always been emphasized, especially in the Goju Kai. Nidan Gary, a flying front kick, reverse punch. Now, this is Yamaguchi Sensei's daughter using karate in a self-defense situation. This movement is actually from Saifa. That's a bunkai from Saifa kata. Now, defense against a knife. Pensetsu Gary to one opponent, block the knife, and then block a club and counterattack. Same idea, block and then counterattack. Blocking the knife, actually using katagaruma. This is a, a throw that was made popular by judo. Flying side kick. Now, defense against uh, a gun wielding assailant, turning to the inside, counterattack with a punch. Kote Gaishi, wrist twisting, and then counterattack. Now these are self-defense moves from Seiza, Japanese formal sitting position. Now, and I realize uh, within Western culture, uh, Westerners don't sit like that. However, these same techniques can be used tachi or standing, or actually from a seated position. Blocking counterattack with a punch. This time the opponent grabs from behind and a choke, Ipan, Ipan Sienage, a throw, and follow up with a punch to the temple. Now these uh, similar t techniques, or the same techniques, are actually used uh, in defense against someone uh, using a bar stool. So rather than seated, with their legs folded under Japanese style, this time it's just sitting on a bar stool. Now Yamaguchi Sensei leads a group of black belts doing the Seunchin Kata. This is actually outside in Tokyo in the early 1960s. Then, every summer, Yamaguchi Sensei used to conduct an outdoor training camp. And members of the Goju Kai would come from all over Japan and practice at these training camps. 
And you can see there was a lot of emphasis placed on physical fitness, running, and then all sorts of uh, strength-building exercises uh, were used as training methods. Running upstairs. A lot of different Japanese martial arts use that same emphasis on conditioning. This is training in the forest, training against uh, the Makiwara, a striking pad made out of straw tied against trees. Running again. Again, cardiovascular uh, conditioning is very important, especially in Kumite. Strength training, push ups. Now, Yamamoto Sensei gives commands to the group. Yamamoto Sensei was one of the uh, Kumite champions of the Goju Kai. Deep knee bends. This is to develop the power in the legs used to close quickly on an opponent. Front kick practice. Front snap kicks. Now the Goju style uses the front snap kick, not exclusively, but uh, quite a bit in its techniques. Abdominal training. San Renzuki. This is triple punch. Three punches thrown in a staccato sort of rhythm. More Makiwara practice. And more running through the forest. Okay, this time Yamamoto Sensei is seen helping a Kohai or junior student finish the run. Kumite, outside in the forest. So sparring practice was an essential part of uh, Goju Kai training in the 60s and the 1970s. One of the things which differentiated from the Okinawa style Goju. In, uh, in the Okinawan systems, uh, freestyle sparring was not practiced that much. This is where Yamaguchi Sensei had made some changes. Again, the front kick is very effective to the groin. But he recovers and goes on. Upper block, reverse punch. This is almost a Yakusoku Kumite, or prearranged sparring style. Now, in addition to uh, some of the Kumite innovations that uh, Yamaguchi Sensei made to the Goju system, he also introduced the Taikyoku Kata, in addition to the other traditional Kata that we saw earlier. Uh, taikyoku are H patterns. In other words, they go to four corners. And uh, although Yamaguchi Sensei didn't invent these, they were the idea was probably came from the uh, Okinawan Geikisai, or more fundamental Kata. Now here, uh, Yamamoto Sensei is seen with some of the other black belts discussing the summer training camps. You can see the architecture in the background, the forest, and so forth. This, these, that style of architecture and the, and the idea of the forest is very uh, dear to the hearts of Japanese people. It's also reflected within the Sh Shinto religion. Now, Temeshawari, a test of strength against uh, Japanese-style roof tiles. Okay, the idea of Temeshawari is to show the power of karate and also to test and to see if the techniques are being performed correctly. Now, you'll notice with an elbow strike, all of those tiles were cracked in half. Now, Yamamoto Sensei does a front kick against boards. Now, double front kick. Two sets of boards. And of course, both of them are broken. Now, the idea of Tameshawari is not a training method in and of itself. There's four boards with a knife hand strike, shto. Now a strike with the head. 
headbutt. Now, dramatic as it may seem, this is what the karate is associated uh, with, with power and so forth and the demonstration of power. Tameshawari is not a training method in and of itself, but is just a demonstration uh, to show that the uh, training actually works. Flying sidekick. Fumikomigeri. This is a uh, stamp kick. Actually stomping on your opponent once he's been taken down. Nukite. Spear finger thrust through two boards. Uh, Gyakuzuki. This is a reverse punch. Now this is two boards on a string, a speed break. Now many times after training, Japanese people like to celebrate uh, with their own uh, cultural uh, unique things that they have. And a sort of one of them is, uh, is having a uh, celebration drinking sake which is Japanese rice wine. This is a custom. Now the idea of socializing like this after training is very important in all the Japanese martial arts. It's known as a kampai party. Kampai literally means dry cup, or in other words, drink up. discussing the ideals of training and then of course demonstration of kata now this is uh, seipai kata by one of Yamaguchi sensei's sons outstretched hand position that's the signature of seipai kata in the beginning kick and an elbow strike. Seipai is a unique, very unique kata. It actually means 18. Turning motion. Cup slap to the groin, step back and block. Strike downward down block then a whirling motion with a rib punch kick and punch to the ribs Whoop, maybe a little too much sake there all right finally hammer fist strike and then finish the form The idea is the spirit of the training, not, not necessarily so much the style or the absolute technical perfection, but the idea of getting together and, and sharing the spirit of the martial art. Now uh, everyone sings a, uh, a song to conclude the event. Now Yamaguchi Sensei was quite famous for conducting uh, seishin renshu. This means spirit training. And realize that uh, Yamaguchi Sensei was also a Shinto priest. And what he's doing here are these hand positions called kuji kiri or kuji ho. Okay, they're there to build uh, spiritual awareness and concentration. Okay, and again, this is linked linked with the uh, Shinto religion or nature worship. Now, uh, Yamaguchi Sensei emphasized this outdoor training. And the idea was to build harmony with nature and, and linking karate training with the Shinto religion. The idea is to pay respect by bowing to the waterfall, paying respect to the kami or spirits, the gods of nature. Now, this is being filmed on Mount Karuma, 
in Japan where Yamaguchi Sensei used to go every summer and do this type of training. This is also referred to as Shugyo or austere training. Now what he's doing is meditating under the waterfall. No doubt that water is cold. And the idea is to maintain concentration. Again, this movement with his hands overhead are, are to try to uh, get in harmony with nature and spiritual unification. Now, he's also practicing the Tensho Kata under the waterfall. Okay, if you can recognize the movements of Tensho there. Those big hand movements actually are uh, indicative of the Goju Kai or Japanese Goju. Now the trees in the Shinto religion are actually sacred objects. The bigger, the older the tree, the more sacred it is. And Yamaguchi Sensei actually combined the uh, concepts of, of uh, meditation, Shugyo training. This is Yamamoto Sensei now under the waterfall. He combined the elements of uh, Shugyo or austere training, meditation, and then of course the breathing aspects from the Sanshin and Tensho Kata, all to achieve a spiritual unification uh, within karate training. It was a complete uh, martial art in every respect. Again, meditating under the waterfall, maintaining correct posture, seated meditation. And the idea is to show the relationship between those things and basic practice or kata practice. Maintaining complete concentration at all times. This is uh, Yamamoto Sensei and a fellow black belt. Now you might notice the hachimakis that they're wearing, or the uh, little piece that fits around the head. That stands for hard work within the Japanese culture. Again, the relentless practice. Now back to kumite. You can see the uh, in-close style of fighting, whereas some of the other systems used a further away type style and then closed, whereas the Goju Ryu fights in close. Now Yamaguchi Sensei addressed some of his black belts and uh, encourages them to train hard. And he is now going to perform the Suparempe Kata. Suparempe means 108. It refers to 108 vital points of the human body and is the highest level and most advanced Goju Ryu Kata. It begins with the same three-step pattern that we've seen in Sanchin, Seisan, and San Seiryu. Stepping and thrusting. Now, Suparempe uh, originally comes from China. It was actually called Pechurin in China. It's known by that name sometimes. You can see the similarities of some of the other kata, such as Tensho, etc., uh, within Suparempe kata. And this is also the longest kata uh, within Goju's uh, syllabus of forms. It contains many advanced techniques, including both open hand uh, combination blocks and strikes. Uh, in four different directions. Turning, Morote Zuki, or double fist punch. Morote Zuki, down block, double punch, block. 
threading the needle, that's called, and there's also a nukite in there, or, th or thrust. Threading the needle, there's a nukite, step in, double down block. Now the kata also has a crescent kick and a 360 degree turn combination. Blocking, similar to Saison. Crescent kick, elbow strike, back fist. Stepping, and then the form concludes with Inugamai, the unique uh, dog posture, as it's called. We would like to express our sincere appreciation to all of you for attending the Goji Kai's funeral for our late father, Master Gogen Yamaguchi. Although we are in extremely sorrow by passing our father, we are grateful to have such a large number of his friends and students here with us today. We hope that our father's teaching and ideas will be with you always, even though he is no longer with us. We've been requested to hand down the spirit of the master, which is a Dominist, and his instruction of Do Shin, the spirit of Do. Recognizing the importance and difficulty, we would like to ask your guidance and cooperation. Thank you again, Kosen Yamaguchi, and
これより故山口豪元先生に対し片演舞を検討いたします演舞に先立ちまして石別の字橋本美樹指導員石別の字今尊敬する先生を失った深い悲しみと先生との懐かしい思い出と私たちの胸は熱き思いであふれんばかりです二度とない人生の中で先生にお会いできお教えまでいただいた私たちは本当に幸せです先生の教えてくださった技を心を守り続け稽古にそして指導に日々励んでいくことをここにお誓い申し上げます最後に先生本当にありがとうございましたどうぞ安らかにお眠りください門下生一同心よりお別れの言葉を捧げます剣部片三鎮下徳睦夫教師ほか続いて剣舞でございます片
スーパーリンペイ二渡利正彦連氏クルルンファー山口正俊連氏聖杯橋本美樹指導員
それでは最後にご列席の皆様による献花に移らせていただきます。And now finally we shall make the presentation of the flowers. 東京都空手道連盟会長笹川隆先生代理同副会長土佐邦彦先生。国際小刀館空手道連盟館長。金沢博和先生Perhaps Yamaguchi Sensei's philosophy can be summed up by his poem, The Five Secrets of Goju Ryu. Reading from right to left, it says, one, when the time is right, move quickly. Two, maintain a sound, calm mind. Three, be light in body. Four, have a clever mind. And five, master the basics. Yamaguchi Sensei's legacy is the Goju Ryu Karate he passed on to his many students around the world. For Yamazato Productions, this is George Alexander speaking. Thank you very much for watching. Arigato gozaimashita. Sayonara.